questions? Stop. You guys ready? Okay. So I remember being like 13, and I, that, that's like the last memory I have of you telling me that you wanted, you know, to go to school and you wanted an education and you always wanted to go to school to like further your career and you felt like you were kind of trapped at your job. Do you feel like I got in the way of you getting an education? No. <sighs> um, the best thing that happened to me was having you and your brother. So, yeah, I put those dreams aside, but raising you and making sure that you went to school and graduated, I wouldn't trade it for my education, even though I really wanted to go to school. Do you, does it still cross your mind like to go back? Every day. Every day? <laughs> so how can I help you? <laughs> I want to do this. We're about to like go get a GED book right now. We're gonna do this. I would like to do that. You didn't tell me every day. Every day I think about it and I pray about it to get the strength to go back and do it because it's like the one thing that I didn't do, even though I make six figures. It's so what's like holding you back now? That I want to continue to provide for you, your your brother and my mom. Your first generation college student. How does that make you feel? To this day, I don't think it hits me, like at all. Um, it still hasn't hit me that I graduated college first. With honors. I, <laughs> I think that was honestly my proudest achievement, graduating from college, because I know that's what you and daddy like always wanted since day one. So it's, it's a moment of pride, and I just wish I kind of like, I, you know, I, I wish it would hit me already that I was the first, but it, to this day, it still hasn't. Sometimes I was just my mental breakdowns was gonna get to me and I, I felt like at points giving up and either trying to leave college and become a model or f go somewhere and try to be on TV and just forget the whole college education thing because I felt like at times it was huge burden to do so many because it was one semester I was doing 21 credits and two internships and I felt like it was a lot and then I would get sick and I, I had shingles I had infections, <laughs> you were there for most of it. So, anxiety. Yeah, and I suffer from so much anxiety to this day. The anxiety still affects me. But there was plenty of times where I felt like I wasn't gonna finish. But honestly, what got me through it was just like knowing that it was for you. And getting that degree was, wasn't even for myself at the point of graduation, it was for you. I know how much you wanted me to have that and me personally I, <laughs> I just that's like the greatest gift I ever could have given to you and I'm it was. very happy that I got to the end and I was it able was. to finish it was what other sacrifices do you feel you've made for me wow um After your father left, there were times where I didn't have enough to provide food for the three of us. And I would go to bed hungry. And I wanted to just make sure that you guys had enough and that you were filled. And it was hard because I experienced that as a child, but I didn't care as long as you and Joy were fed. Nobody knows that. Don't cry. It's okay. It's good to say it out loud. Yeah. Who thought that in this country that has so many possibilities that a mother could go to sleep hungry? I was really proud of you when you won Miss New York. What sacrifices did you make to become, to win that pageant, to become Miss New York? I don't think people like know the, the amount of work and time that goes into pageants. I think they just think that pageant girls like parade on stage and just, they go that day and they're given these dresses and they're given these bikinis, but there's so much preparation behind it. Um, 
there's training. There was me going to the gym twice a day. There was me going to interview classes. There was me watching the news every morning. There was me reading the newspaper, picking up three different newspapers to stay on top of the news. There was me going to work full time while doing this and going to the gym at five in the morning and then going to work and then going to gym at 7 p.m. and then, you know, like doing blogs and and like social media to get to the pageant and Help trying to me. get yeah <laughs> helping you and um there's just so much i think the number one sacrifice when it came to pageants was more so time and just like personal sanity because you never feel like you have time for yourself to do the things that you want to do how do you feel about the bullying that took place when you got out of the pageant um life i think that's honestly sucks it's honestly the hardest thing I've ever had to face. Um, it's just because you think representing Latinos or representing Dominicans or representing women that people would like have your back and they would cheer you on. And I think, I feel like they never did. And it kind of sucked, it sucked a lot. And um, I just always did it to make them proud and it kind of just really sucked because I just, the whole time I was doing pageants, like I wanted to represent Dominicans and I was trying so hard. And even to this day, I feel like when I'm around Dominicans, even at work, it's like they make you feel like you can't represent them because you were born here. You don't speak 100% Spanish. And it, it it's really unfortunate because Everything I did, I kind of did it for them. I remember the day, like, just, it's like clear vision in my head. That day I told you that I was changing my academic track from law to communications, and you cried. So I just wanted to know if you're proud of me now. <laughs> I've been proud of you <laughs> the day you came out of me. <laughs> um, I was just scared. Um, I'm very, very proud of you. Like, I mean that. I, I don't think I've ever looked up to anybody the way I look up to you because of all your accomplishments. And the only reason why I wanted you to go to law school is because since you were two years old and you used to walk around the house in your diaper, I'm going to be a lawyer. And you went to school and all through grade school and all through high school, you were saying that you were going to be a lawyer. And you are, have this natural way of arguing and fighting for what's right. That I felt this is like perfect. This is like a calling that she has. So when you called me and told me that you were going to change, I didn't cry because I was disappointed. I was just scared that you were running away from what your calling was. And I'm glad you did. Um, one day you told me that you wanted to be happy doing whatever it is you were going to do. And you said to me, I want to get up in the morning and be like you. And I was like, be like me. I look up to you. And you said, you wake up every morning. You said, I love my job. I love what I do. And that's what I want to do. I want to do something that I love. And I'm glad that you listen to your heart and, and you follow where your dream was because you love what you do. I feel that parents are blessed to have children, every parent. But I was like super super blessed with you because you were like an amazing person inside out. Forget about your looks, that's just a plus. But I want you to realize that people like you are not normal. You're like one of a kind and not because you're my daughter. You're just an amazing human being. Thank you. Thank you, Hawk. You know what I would love for her to do, but now that I heard how miserable she was, Miss Universe. That's like my dream, seeing yeah. her on the Miss Universe stage representing the Dominican Republic. That's like... You need to let that go, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Into your 28, I'm still going to dream of that She's and pray. I 